Hello there, Mr. Sutton here bringing you the AB Calculus 614 Extra Practice Number 4 Solutions on Volumes with Known Cross Sections. For this calculator based free response problem, we have this region R bounded by the graphs of sine of pi x and uh, x cubed minus 4x. First task is to find the area of R. So, our general setup here, we're going to be taking an integral from left to right and we're going to be doing a top minus bottom function to find the area. So just to make my life a little bit easier because they didn't give these functions names on their own I'm going to uh, define the sine of pi x function as f of x and then I'm going to call this other function here g of x. So now I can refer to these quickly and easily without having to write the whole function out. So in order to take the uh, antiderivative, in order to take the integral, I need my limits of integration. I need to know specifically where f of x and g of x equal each other. Now taking a look at this picture here, it sure looks like they equal each other at x equals 0 and 2. I could find the exact intersections on the calculator, but let's just plug 0 and 2 in quickly and see if that actually works out. So sine or f of 0 here is going to be sine of 0, which is 0 g of 0 also comes out to 0, so they definitely intersect at 0. And now if I plug in 2 for x, sine of 2 pi is 0, and here we have 2 cubed, which is 8, minus 4 times 2, which is also 8, so that also comes out to 0. So even without using the calculator, we can see that these intersect at 0 and 2. So those are going to be my limits of integration. So for my area here then, I just need the integral from 0 to 2 of, and now if I'm doing top minus bottom, well, let's see, which of these is the uh, top function? It looks like, I could guess here, I think sine is this top one and uh, x cubed minus 4x is this bottom one, but I don't actually have to guess because I am allowed to use a calculator. So let me actually go to the calculator now and, and see what we're looking at. So here I am in my y equals. I've entered f of x as y1 and g of x is y2. And now let me see here. I'm going to go to my window and I'm going to graph between 0 for my x min and 2 for my x max. That should give me the same window they have here. And let me do zoom 0, zoom fit, just to hopefully get the same picture that they gave me. So there's f of x, which is the sine function. And here is our cubic polynomial. So it's you know, just like I thought, the, the f is on top and the, the g function's on the bottom. So when I write my integral then, if I don't want to use absolute value, I'm going to write f of x minus g of x dx. And now I can just plug this in the calculator. So to plug all this in, I'm going to go to math 9 for an integral. I'm going from 0 to 2. And if I'm doing f of x minus g of x, I'm going to be doing alpha trace y1, because that's where I stored f of x, minus alpha trace y2, because that's where I stored g of x. Put an x next to the d, press enter, and that comes out to, wow, exactly 4. For this part, we have the horizontal line y equals negative 2, splitting region r into two parts. So let me just draw that line in there. So they want us to write but not evaluate an integral expression for the part of R that is below this horizontal line. So the, we want the area of R below this line. Well, I need to figure out my limits of integration for this one. That's going to be where g of x, that's this lower function here, intersects negative 2. So let me set those equal, and I'll solve that on my grapher now. To solve that equation, I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to put... Actually, I should put negative 2 in for my y3. And then I'm going to deselect my sine function here because I don't really want to see that on a graph anymore. I just want to see the g function and negative 2. So let me go to, actually, I'm already on the window from 0 to 2. So let me just do zoom 0 again to reposition my window so that I can see both of these functions. And I just want to find these two intersection spots here. So let me do second trace, option 5 for intersect. And let me move my spider over here. Enter, enter, enter. That comes out to about 0.5392. And I'm going to call that P, just so I don't have to rewrite it ever again. 
And now coming back here, I'm going to do second trace, option five again. And I'll move my spider over to the other intersection. There we are. Enter, enter, enter. And that's going to be 1.6751, which I'll call Q. And now I just need the integral from P to Q of, and now we're doing top minus bottom again. So in this case, the top function is negative 2, and G is the bottom function. So this is going to be negative 2 minus G dx inside there. And they said don't evaluate, so I am going to take them at their word and not evaluate this. On this problem part, they're telling us this region R is the base of a solid, and for each solid, each cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is a square. Find the volume. So essentially, we have these squares whose base is basically the distance between these functions, and these squares are just kind of growing three-dimensionally out of this area and we want to find the volume. Well, we're just going to be integrating an area over this interval here from 0 to 2. We just need to get the area of the cross section, and that's what we'll be integrating. So in general, if we're dealing with squares, we can write a of x equals s squared. And I'm going to write a1 of x, because just kind of looking ahead, there's a part d that also requires me to have an area formula. I don't want to confuse it with this one. So I'll call this one a1, and what I'm doing in part d, I'll call a sub 2. Um, so this particular area formula, we have s squared. But now in order to integrate this, I need to express it in terms of x. So the base of the squares, again, they're just going from one end of this bounded region to the other, perpendicular to the x-axis. So that means that the side of the square is just going to be top minus bottom, which in this case is just f of x minus g of x. So I can just write f of x minus g of x squared. And my limits of integration are the same as they were for finding the area of this whole bounded region. So my volume, then, is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of this a sub 1 of x dx that I just wrote here. And now I can just do this on the calculator. And let me write a sub 1 in there. There we go. Now let me do this on the calculator. So I did math 9 for integral. I'm going from 0 to 2, just like before. And in here, I have to open a parentheses now. And in that parentheses, I need to do alpha trace y1 minus alpha trace y2. So that's f of x minus g of x on the calculator. Close the parentheses, and then I need to square that whole thing. And then let me just do a dx. So that comes out to 9.978. For this last problem part, we're told that this R surface here is actually the surface of a, a small pond. And at all points that are a distance of x away from the y-axis, the depth of the water is given by h of x equals 3 minus x. So for example, if you are 1 away from the y-axis, then you have a depth of 3 minus 1, or a depth of 2. Um, so the thing to, to keep track of here to notice is that at a single x value, your depth is the same all the way across this pond. So this ends up giving you kind of a, a rectangular shaped cross section because you're going down the same amount at all points at each x value. So we're just going to be basically uh, integrating a bunch of rectangles across this interval. So let me get my area formula then. So this, this is kind of like the squares we did in part c of this problem. So I, I'm going to write a sub 2 of x equals b times h. This is just rectangle area. And I'm writing a sub 2, uh, just so I don't confuse this with the area formula that I wrote back in part c. So now the base of these rectangles is just the distance between these two functions. So f of x minus g of x. And the height of these rectangles is just this h of x function here. It's a depth. We're going down instead of up. But it, it's the same kind of deal. So now I just have to take the integral from 0 to 2 of this a sub 2 of x dx. And let me do that on the calculator. So I'm going to do most of the work for this in my y equals. If you take a look here, down in y4, I've defined my h of x function, 3 minus x. That's just this h of x function here. And in y5, I've defined pretty much what I did for a sub 2. I had 
basically f minus g, y1 minus y2, in the parentheses, times my h of x function, which I put in y4. Um, so y5 then, that is my a sub 2. So quitting out of there now, let's do math 9 integral from 0 to 2. And at this point, I need to do alpha trace y5. So alpha trace y5. There we go. And we'll put an x in the dx and press enter. And that gives us 8.370, if I round it off to three decimals. For this calculator-based pre-response problem, I've got these two functions, radical x and e to the negative 3x. So they didn't label it on the graph, but radical x is this uh, function that's going up. And my decaying exponential function, that's the one that's going down. And then we have this R-shaded region between those functions and the line x equals 1, that vertical line. So based on this setup, we want to find the area of R for our first task. To make my life a little bit easier, I'm actually going to give these functions names. I'm going to say f of x is my square root function, and g of x is my exponential function. So the first thing I need to figure out if I'm going to find the area here, um, since I'm going to be doing in general just an integral from left to right of top minus bottom, I need to find my limits of integration. I know the upper limit of integration is going to be 1. That's the far right of this interval. But I need to know what this left side is going to be. So to find that, I need to figure out where f of x and g of x intersect, where they equal each other. And since this is a calculator problem, I can do that directly on the calculator. To start this process, I went to my y equals, and I entered my f function here as y1. And in y2, I put this g function, this exponential function. Now I'm going to go ahead and graph them. For the window I'm using, I'm just going to go from 0 to 1, because if you look here, that's what they gave me in this picture, which they were so nice to provide to me. Uh, now let me go to window then. So I've got an x min of 0, x max of 1. And we'll do zoom 0, zoom fit, to get the, the perfect window on what's going on here. So there's my exponential. There is my, or actually that was my square root. This is my exponential coming down. And let me do second trace, and then option 5 for intersect. And let's just see where these cross. So enter, enter, enter. And that gives us 0 0.2387. I'm going to give that a name, that number a name. I'm going to call that A, the x value A. So now I don't have to ever write out that decimal again. And I'm going to do the same thing on my calculator, so I don't have to type it in. Let me just quit out of this graph. And I'm going to go to the store button. That's going to store the last x value that I got off my graph. And I'm going to store that as alpha a. So now I've saved that value for all of time, or at least until I assign something else for a. All right, at this point then, I need to do the integral from a to 1 of, and now it's got to be top minus bottom to get this area, because I'm getting these distance strips and adding them all together. So the top function here, that's the square root function. That's the f function. g is the bottom function right here. So I'm going to be doing basically just f of x minus g of x dx. And I've already labeled what f and g are, so I can just write that down here. And now I go back to the calculator to do this. So here's what this looks like on my calculator. I did math 9, alpha a for the lower limit, 1 for the upper limit. And in here, I did uh, alpha trace y1 and alpha trace y2 just to get those functions because that's where I entered my f and my g functions in y1 and y2. Put an x next to the d, press enter, and that's going to be 0.443 for that area of r. For this part of the problem, they want me to find the volume of the solid generated when r is revolved around the horizontal line y equals 1. So here's the line y equals 1. I'm just revolving r around that. So I'm still going to be using an integral from a to 1. And I defined a back in part a when I uh, figured out where these functions intersected. But now I have to ask, what area am I integrating over that interval? Because I'm going to have to have some area slices. Since this is a solid of revolution, I know that I either have disks or washers. Now to pick between them, I notice that my shaded region, my bounded region, there's a gap between that and my axis of revolution. 
So that means I'm going to have to use washers or donuts as my cross-section area because there's a hole when I revolve this thing around the axis of revolution. Um, so I'm going to go with A of X, and I'll call this A sub 1 because I'm doing another area function later on in this problem. Um, that's going to equal pi times big R squared minus little r squared. So in this case, big R, that's the distance from the axis of revolution to the further away part of my bounded region. Um, so that's going to be 1 minus the g of x function down here. That whole thing is going to be big R. So I'm going to be doing 1 minus g of x squared for big R squared. And then for little r squared, well, little r, that's the distance from my axis of revolution to the closer side of the bounded region. So that's going to be 1 minus f of x. And I'll be squaring that and subtracting it inside there. So now I'm going to be doing the integral from a to 1 of, well, basically just a sub 1 of x dx. So I'm going to do all this on the calculator now. Just to make things a little bit cleaner, I'm going to do all of my work in the y equals. So in y3, that's where I'm going to actually enter the whole formula for this a sub 1 of x. So for that, I need a pi times, and now I have to open a, a parentheses. I'm going to need a couple parentheses here. Um, so this is the parentheses, this is the brackets that I'm opening right now. And in there, I need a parentheses for basically big R squared. So that's going to be 1 minus the g function, which is alpha trace y2 on my calculator. So close that, square it. Now I have to subtract, open another parentheses, 1 minus the f function. So 1 minus alpha trace y1, close that and square it. And then let me close the brackets here. Let me quit out of there now. And let me do math 9. We have the integral from alpha a to 1. And I'm just going to be doing alpha trace y3 this time around. Because that's where I just put that a sub 1 of x formula. Put an x next to my d. Press enter. And that's going to come out to 1.424. There we go. For the last part of this problem, we're told that R is the base of a solid. And for this solid, each cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is a rectangle whose height is five times the length of its base. We want the volume of the solid. So this is kind of like uh, part B, where you are taking an area formula and integrating it across the interval. We're still going to be using the interval from A to 1. Only this time around, the shape is going to be these rectangles instead of uh, washers. So for my rectangle formula, I'm going to write a sub 2 of x equals base times height. And in order to really make this work, I need to get all of this in terms of x, just like I did with the, the washers in part b. Um, but first, it would probably be helpful if I just had one letter between these b's and h's. Now, the letter that helps me the most is going to be b, because I can relate the base of the rectangle directly back to my functions that make up this bounded region. So they told us here that the height was 5 times the base. I'm just going to rewrite this as b times 5b. So 5b squared then. And now the base of these rectangles is just the, the distance between these two functions. If you think about what's happening with these rectangles, the rectangles, the base is the distance between these, and they're just kind of growing three-dimensionally out of this area. Um, so I can just write basically f minus g instead of b in here, because that's where those, the base of these rectangles is coming from. So I have 5 times f of x minus g of x, quantity squared. That is my area formula. There's no pi's or anything else like that involved here. So now I'm just going to take the integral from a to 1 of basically a sub 2 of x dx. And now we'll do that on the calculator. So just like I did for earlier parts of the problem, I'm going to do a whole bunch of work in the y equals. This time around, I'm going to enter a sub 2 in y4. So I'm going to be doing basically uh, 5 times f of x minus g of x squared here. So let me do a 5 and open a parentheses. We need alpha trace y1 for f of x minus alpha trace y2 for g of x. Close that parentheses, square it, and now I have 5 times f of x minus g of x squared. Quitting out of there, I'm still doing an integral, so math 9. We're going from alpha a to 1, just like we have on the last two parts of this problem. 
And now I'm going to just do alpha trace y4, because that's where I stored my a sub 2 function. And then dx equals 1.554.